Hello and welcome, my fantastical fibre folk, my woolen witches, alpaca officiados, silken sorceresses. Oh, I'm coming up with more now. <laughs> uh, welcome back. This, is, this will be podcast number three of the Pearl J podcast. I have just come home from Fibertron, which was a yarn festival here in New Zealand. It was fantastic. I brought so much yarn. And I'm going to expose my now drastically increased yarn stash for you all here today. Um, <laughs> let me justify myself. This, if you've been here before, you know that I feel very passionately about trying to purchase local, support local, um, from a nationalistic perspective, but also from a sustainability perspective. I live in New Zealand, so we've got a lot of fantastic yarn fibres available here, uh, and a lot of really talented yarn dyers. So going to the festivals, like Fibertron, is a great opportunity to see all the yarn that I've been stalking online for a significant amount of time now. Actually touch it, figure out what fibre bases I wanted uh, for the relevant colourways. And so I actually went in with a little bit of a plan this time, which me and plans don't usually work well together. Uh, but I had a few patterns in mind that I wanted to get yarn for. I had a few um, yarn dyers that I knew I wanted to get certain products from them. Uh, and I did stick to some of that. And I also picked up stuff uh, when I saw it and I was just like, I love that, I need it, I want it now. Uh, and I'm glad that I was... Even though that led to like a lot of yarn purchases, I am happy with every single purchase I made. It was a lot of one of a kind pieces. Um, well, not a. I suppose every hand dyed yarn is one of a kind, but I mean stuff like this, which is by Leo and Loft. This is uh, Nana Cindy's mum. Hand spun this. And there was only the one hank, you know? So these type of very unique pieces that if I didn't get it then, I would never have got it. Um, and anyway, justifying myself. Um, this is my opportunity to, yeah, touch all the yarns that I've been stalking online and knowing certain yarns that I was interested in then make the decision to purchase or not, and thus support local, um, encourage sustainable yarn practice in myself, uh, and also support things like natural yarn dyeing. Um, so I did purchase a couple of little treats from Goodwill, who is a dyer who uses only natural dyes, so things like indigo, uh, eucalyptus leaves, onion skins. Oh, I'll show you what I got from her. Um, and this was, this is going to keep me like well stocked until I managed to knit through all of this. This is going to... Knitting is so slow. Buying yarn is so fast and instant. Uh, I have yet to find a balance between the two things, but this is going to be my stash that I intend to chew through and I don't need any more yarn from here on out. I say. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold myself to this though. I need I am so satisfied with my yarn purchases. And look, you can see why. I mean this is gorgeous. So this is from Goodwill. You can see the label there. All natural dyes. This one, I believe, this buttery buttery yellow, is eucalyptus leaf. And this one is a, she said it's quite a complicated process of the dye, and you can really see that in the variety of colours in there. She did tell me um, what was used to dye this. 
it's pomegranate seeds or like the skin. Uh, onion skins was the is the yellow in this, I think. Uh, indigo. I think there was a type of wood as well. So I got two each of these. Well, yeah. And I'm thinking I'm gonna do like a like a golf vest, like a or or a jockey uniform where they have the big diamond colour work. So I'm gonna do a colour work vest with diamonds in yellow and this beautiful variegated yarn. And these are 90% merino, 10% linen, 10 ply worsted weight. So just a beautiful, like a slightly thicker yarn. So it'll work up a little bit quicker, which I tend to appreciate. Do love a good fingering, but I, I, I buy so much yarn. So if a project can work up a little bit quicker and I can like chew through um, and also get around to making the things like all the ideas that I have in my head I, I mean if I could knit all day I would but I can't so uh, if I can have a little bit of efficiency in my process that's great um, but I'm not going that's not a huge priority for me like if it's going to take me a bit of time to knit I'm also happy with that and I really appreciate and am thankful to knitting so they just opened up a new road out here and it's very loud so I'll try to edit out some of that traffic noise so I'm sorry if I can't quite get it all um, yeah so uh, I I can appreciate a project that takes a while as well for instance this is the Hans Thong sweater by Petite Knit. This is for my partner in the Jungle Colorway by Fiber to Go. And it's got this very subtle variegation. And I am really, really in love with the raglan increases. I think they just look so neat. It's a super washed yarn, and I kind of like how how the stitches turned out because it's a little bit of a stretchier yarn I think the tension I was putting on when I was knitting and then it kind of springs back into place once I've removed that tension so and this is on four millimeter needles so this is probably one of the biggest projects on the smallest needles I've ever uh, attempted but it's working up pretty quickly considering um, so not afraid of time-consuming pieces even though I just said this was knitting up quickly anyway I'm just gonna move my mic a little bit because I'm or maybe I'll move the camera mm. Uh, no, you can see it now. That's not good. Are we still good? You can hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's fine. I know, we did this last time as well. I'm <laughs> Like, I get set up and then I think, yes, we're ready to go. And then it's like, oh, I second guess myself. So we'll, we'll gradually get through the Fibertron acquisitions, but if you've been here before, you know that we don't do this in order in any way, it's just kind of whatever I grab or is in my vicinity or is like makes sense in the train of thought that I'm going on, I'm going to talk about. So this is in my vicinity, so I'm just going to pick this up. This is the... Cosmo Top by Unlucky Knits. I will hopefully insert a video or a picture of me actually wearing it. 
and I haven't blocked it yet, but it's got this, it's a tank top with a cutout, uh, and I knit this in click heat in cotton, which is a yarn that they used to stock at Spotlight, but it's been on clearance, and I think that they're discontinuing it, at least at Spotlight. I knit this on four millimeter needles, and I knit the smallest size. I messed up. I thought that the yarn I was using was thicker than the yarn that she used. And so I was like, oh, I'll just knit the smaller size and it'll be fine. So the sizing goes, the smaller size goes up to a 75 centimeter bust. I'm a 76 centimeter bust, so I could have easily done the next size up. <sighs> After I knit like a decent portion of this, I measured it to see what my gauge actually was. And it was three stitches tighter than the recommended gauge. But for some reason I thought like, oh, more stitches equals more tight, my brain. Um, Cause I'm often knitting after coming home from a big day at work or like, yeah. Um, and so this is tight. I can get it on, which is the main thing. And it's cotton. So it will stretch once I block it. And it's probably for the best that I did knit the smaller size. Um, but yeah, it was a little bit touch and go there, because I was like, can I, if I can't actually get this over my head, then that's an issue. Really enjoyed this pattern. If I was to knit it again, I think I'll do different increases. Because I don't really like how it puckers along this edge here. I think I would make a, because uh, these are all just knit, knit togethers, knit two togethers. Um, and that's what it says in the pattern, but I think I would do something different. Uh, and just have like another line going along. But apart from that, I'm very, very happy with this pattern. And yeah, so that's that. Oh, I was gonna say something about something. Oh, 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 yes. On the subject of me knitting things too small, I've noticed that this is a bit of a trend and I think it's a combination of me trying to use less yarn so that I can buy a variety of yarn but I don't have to buy lots of one thing and therefore I can like continue buying cool different yarns whilst and also like knitting smaller garments will take a little, will be faster. So there's that side of it. Uh, and then there's also the knowledge of things shrinking after blocking. Um, and I'm really behind on my blocking. So I've got a, quite a few garments that need to be blocked, but it's currently winter here in New Zealand and things take a while to dry. The sun came out today, which has been so lovely. Uh, and made Fibertron even more special because we're out at the Hamilton Gardens uh, out in the sunshine and just, I mean the event was indoors but it was just nice walking in there and I don't know, I just feel happier when the sun's out yeah. so speaking of things when I knit them too small for myself I've made a bit of progress on the look at my holes by James N. Watts, knitted in the Spring Fever colorway by Purple Sprouting um, on her, I think it's a merino nylon base, superwash, four ply. Uh, I am so in love with this mesh and I really like how the variegated yarn has shown up in because of the mesh pattern and because, you know, you're knitting stock in there in a variegated colour, it tends... I don't, I don't really know how to say this. But you'll get, like, those stripes, right? And, like, a lot of... Because of how big the loop of yarn is when it goes into the dye pot, and obviously the dyer will 
put colours in in their own way, but there's a certain point where it will start to look very similar. Like, you'll get your, your stripes of variegation, uh, and yes, there will be variety in that and, and how they dye the yarn, but working it in stocking it, you can sometimes get the same type of patterning as you would working stocking it in, a, in another hand dye variegated yarn. So, uh, I, that's why I really like this texture because it just, you see the colour in a different way, it's not in those stripes uh, and I don't have anything against those stripes, I think it's a really cool way to add interest and in, like with this one for instance, it just gives the jersey so much depth, that really subtle variegation I think and jungle is a very appropriate name for this colorway because it just it gives that jungly vibe but without giving the full you know khaki army camo look uh, but in saying that I like a texture with a variegated yarn I would still there's still certain texture stitches like I, I don't think I would ever do like a lace work with a variegated yarn I think that would be too confusing for my brain to look at and then you're potentially muddying some of the beautiful color variation that you see that is my perspective if you like a uh, lace and color variegation combo good for you I prefer this type of texture with a variegation it's enough about that and I knit this too small around the waist. That's what I was saying. Ah, it looks ridiculous right now because <laughs> it's all bunched up. But, oh, n another cool thing. I'm like only halfway through a full 100 gram skein of hand dyed four ply making this. And I'm gonna try and see if I can get a dress out of it, like a tight fitting dress, which is why this has been sitting on a cable for so long because I have to try it on and figure out how to do the increases to go over the hips and I'm lazy uh, but you can if you have a similar size to me or even if you're not I will just point out that doing the this pattern by James M. Watts does not require a lot of yarn and you could like almost I'm gonna try and get a full dress out of one skein of yarn like that's so economical because yes, hand dye down is expensive, but if you can use one skein of hand dye yarn to make an entire outfit, I mean, you, excluding undergarments, obviously, because like you wear this by itself, and like, hello. Also, that pattern is fantastic. I really, really like that pattern. Cat from Heather and Hops. I understand your obsession with that pattern now. I know why you've knit like four of these. It's so good. And as soon as I figure out how to do the dress version, I'm gonna knit another lacy uh, mesh top, but I'm gonna go oversized with it. Now, I forgot to bring this out with me, but I have a garment that I'm going to use to model uh, the mesh top that I want to make. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go grab that. Ad break. Okay. So I bought this t-shirt in Berlin some years ago. And see, this is a just a dress I've got on the same hanger underneath and I would wear it like this but see it's just an oversized mesh t-shirt and so you can see how I could use the James and Watts pattern to make something like this right just like how um Kat from Heather and Hops did her version of it when she removed the ribbing from the neck and the arms uh, and I think she knit a bigger size, or like with a, a bigger needle. 
I'm not sure. Get over to her channel if you, if you want to know more about what she's done. She's done some really nice versions of this pattern. And what I'm gonna knit it in is... And this is a yarn that I knew beforehand. I was like, I need to go to Nana Cindy's stall and I need to buy one of her UV reactive yarns. Did you know you can get glow in the... Well glow in the dark under blue light yarns because you can and it's pink <laughs> so this is from Nanis indeed this is 72% kid mohair 28% silk and this is Jenny in the Bubba Gump pink colorway so good she's got a couple of yarns that are um, glow in the dark uh, but it's not clearly labelled on the website or her Instagram which ones are. So you will need to ask her. But she's got quite a few. And oh, there's some, there was a lot of really cool yarns at her stall. But I knew that I wanted to make this garment. So I got the yarn to make this garment. Um, and I'm going to hold the pink together with this. I think it's a Surrey... Yeah, 74% Baby Surrey Alpaca, 26% Mulberry Silk. This is Sexy Sister, Sexy Sister colorway. So holding that together to make a oversized t-shirt version of James N. Watts' Look at My Hold. And the thing I love about what this garment will be, perfect festival concert outfit. Because it will roll up so small to fit in a, bam uh, a backpack or a fanny pack. But then when you put it on, not only will you glow in the dark if there's blue lights around. But you'll also um, be warm. And festivals and stuff in New Zealand or like going out clubbing or whatever can be cold. Especially in, in the winter months. And sometimes it can be a bit cold. Um, around the New Year's time too, which is when you, you know, usually a lot of partying and joyous occasions. Uh, and so I, because I wanted more of a hot pink, and this is more of like a light bubble gum pink, so I think that combining it with this, which is not UV reactive, so UV reactive plus a little bit of variegation, a little bit of a, this oranginess, I think it's going to just make a really nice interesting garment and I think it will be able to go over a couple of different fits so if I'm wearing like a little black dress or a skirt and a crop top maybe in like another vibrant color mm, huh, that's a bit much but I'm always making crop tops, right? So this will be the perfect thing to wear with a crop top and just like a normal skirt. So that was a planned purchase. This was, this wasn't, but they went together to make the planned garment. Now, just because I've got this here, and we're just gonna change that completely. But I went um, shopping at Tauranga Knitting Centre a few weeks ago. And I remembered this silk that they had had on sale, like a silk viscose blend. And I had gone in there like some months back when I purchased, uh, no, what did I buy from them? Anyway, and I had seen that yarn and I've been like, oh, not too sure, not gonna get it. And then I've just been thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it. And you know when it's, a well uh, considered purchase when you're left thinking about it for weeks after you saw it. And I went back and it was still on sale. Not only that, but the supply had gone from three balls, which is what was available when I first went, to eight. And so I purchased eight balls of this. And if you've seen this picture on my Instagram, it looks like like melted sunshine. I don't know how else to, to describe it. I'm gonna show. I don't know why it's still blurry. Can you see it alright? 
So it's a Visco Silk Blend. And I'm self-drafting a pattern for it. It's going to be like an... So this is the neckline. And it's going to just sit like off the shoulder like there. Um, a little off the shoulder dress. Because I bought eight balls of the stuff. Uh, I'm going to knit the body straight. So that it kind of bunches over the hips and so you get this draping effect over the top and then it's like fitted over the hips and so it'll be like loose off the shoulder draping tight around the hips and that's based off of um a dress that my sister has and because when I bought the yarn I was with well within her vicinity and so I saw her and um we kind of both came up with the idea at the same time. We're like, oh, it should be like this dress. Uh, my sister is a fashion designer. Um, loves clothes just as much as I do. <laughs> We've been playing dress up ever since we were children. And nothing has changed. <gasps> Speaking of dress up. Oh, we're all over the show today. This is how we do it. This is my Viper vest. Now, I did post a picture of this on Instagram, and the picture I posted was pretty terrible. Um, and since I posted that picture, I actually ripped out the v-neck and the armholes and redid them. Accidentally ripped out the v-neck twice. <laughs> because I thought I'd just finished knitting the v-neck like, for the second time, and it was perfect. I'd made the adjustments I wanted to. And then I was like, okay, I'm gonna um, now do the same thing, but for the armholes. So I start ripping it out, ripping it out, ripping it out, pick the thing up to start knitting again and realise I've just unravelled the v-neck that I had just completed. So, uh, I don't know where I've lost my brain cells along the way, but, <laughs> you know, I, I feel like I should still have more mental capacity. Uh, but we're having fun, right? So, lost brain cells. But all in good, good fun. Cheers. The irony. Okay. So I knit this. This is self-drafted pattern. I knit it halfway up the back up. Uh, no, no increases or short short rows on the back. Just a casting off no actually I put the neckline on a provisional cast on wait no what am I saying what am I saying oh no I started with a provisional cast on across the front back knitted down to the underarms made increases to go under the underarms put those stitches on hold came back up to the provisional cast on picked up stitches for the shoulders knit down making increases. Now you can see I haven't done any type of line or anything there, it's just straight. Made increases, got to here, started making increases for under the arms, knit straight. Now I think if I was to do it again I might actually do decreases for the waist because I thought this was going to be a little bit more oversized than what it actually is, it's quite fitted. Um, but I'm really enjoying wearing it now. And the adjustments that I made for the neckline and the armholes is that I had done the typical thing where you are picking up stitches and you skip a stitch every so often. So I think I was doing like pick up three, skip one. And that's the picture that you saw on Instagram, if you saw it, was uh, the stitches the, the neckline when I had done it that way, but it was quite scrunched, scrunched up. It was like up here. Uh, and I didn't like that. And I realized that the reason it was scrunching is because when I knit the garment, I was slipping the first stitch. So I had like less edge stitches. So through a little bit of trial and error, I figured out actually the best way to do it is just to pick up all the stitches around the neckline and the armholes, and that gave me the slightly looser fit that I wanted. Yeah. Now I'm hoping I can get through everything that I want to talk about before the light goes, so this is going to be a good 
motivation for me to get through the material. Mm. Now, I've made a little bit of progress on uh, this kind of bolero arm warmer struggle shruggy situation again um, this is a self-drafted pattern that I'm still figuring out I uh, I'm quite liking how it's coming along it's knit with Adrafil knit coal which is the self patterning yarn very nice I picked that up from Robin's Cottage in Tauranga. So what this is going to be, it's going to be the little button here, a twisted rib collar. Then we've got um, an arm. I don't know what this construction is called, but I really like it. And I learned this method of construction from doing the ribber tee. Uh, so you do increases on either side of this band until you hit the appropriate shoulder length and then you do increases inside of the sleeve. Um, I had too much fabric. See how the sleeve seam is actually over here? I had worked too much of this and so what I've done is I've actually split for the sleeves but taking some of the material from the front panel and from the back panel because it was, it was just too big and I'm because I'm wanting it to do this angled thing it needs to be a little bit more fitted. So this is how it is at the moment. I'm going to do decreases along the back to kind of bring it into an angled V shape at the back, just keeping that shape. And then I'm just going to knit the sleeves straight so they have a little bit of a, um, so they'll be a little bit big, like maybe like from there to there. A little bit of a witch sleeve. Love a good witch sleeve. Um, so I haven't named this pattern yet. Not sure what it will be but the thing I really like about that type of design of like just keeping the arms warm is that it's the perfect combination for with a vest or a slipover and I've always I'm always picking up yarn and thinking oh I'll make a I'll make a vest with that I'll make a slipover uh, and I'll show you some examples of ideas shortly but then my always my struggle is oh, my, my arms are cold and something like this does work great um also with the combination of like a, a wrist warmer that's what i was wearing today just that especially if they come up to about here because then you've only got this that's not got that knit warmth on it and that's fine but sometimes you just want like as much knit wear on your body as possible and i'm uncomfortable trying to put a jersey over top of a vest i I don't like that. That's it doesn't sit well with me. But putting like a little bolero shruggy over top of a vest or slip over, I like that. I don't think these two would go very well together though. I still have to figure out. <laughs> and that's the funny thing is like I've made this or oh, making this, but it will not go with any of the vests that I've got on the needles. I've only or, or have made. I've, this is the only vest I've finished. I've got one other vest on the needles and that's in like a honey colour. I don't think that will go. And it's textured so it's like textured against self-striping, self-patterning. Also have a look at that. Isn't that nice? But yeah, I, I if it was a texture in a white, I think that could be acceptable to go against this. But the texture in the yellow, honey colour, nah. I'm gonna put some gloves on, it's starting to cool down. Okay, so, well since we're on the topic of vests, I will show you, wait, no, wait, did I already show you, oh my god, brain cells, how many do I have left, like three to rub together right now? No, I did, I did already show you the, the big diamond vest that I'm planning with this. Okay, no, we've done that. Oh, now I've figured out... One of the coolest things about um, my experience at Fibertron today was... I would pick up little bits and pieces 
and be like, oh, this is amazing. I, but there's only two hanks or one hank of this thing. But if I find certain colors to match it, I'll be able to make a full garment. And then walking two stalls over and being like, that's the thing that goes with this thing. And, oh, that was so satisfying to me. Oh, also, on that same type of subject, uh, the two sisters, one died of uh, Nana Cindy, one died this yarn, the other died this yarn, and so I was like, oh, that's so cool, I'm like bringing them together um, into one outfit. And then I also purchased yarn that the mum had hand spun, as I said earlier. So I had picked up a couple of the hand spun yarns, from Leo and Loft. So we've got this awesome purple, teal, blues, white. And this is uh, wool, mohair, and silk. Then we've got, um, <laughs> I really like how Cat from Heather and Hops. Um, refers to like her favorite color of green as like a slimy green um, <laughs> and I suppose this, this isn't the same as like the slimy greens that she uses but like it, it gives me kind of slimy vibes uh, just this beautiful mix of greens and then the one I think I already showed you this with the blues so then I went down to a stall at the other end of the room and found this in a sale bin. This is a, a hand dyed yarn that is a woolen spun Pullworth. Uh, it is in the deep sea colorway and it is by Gumtree Gully Alpacas. And when I bought this, I was like, oh, I'm going to get a blue. You see that blue in it? But now I've changed my mind. Like, I saw this and I was like, oh, perfect. It'll go with this yarn. Yay. But I've since changed my mind. Now I have decided, because this was in the same sale bin. Uh, I think it's the same fibre. Yeah, it's the same fibre. Um look at them together isn't that just so satisfying that like perfect color contrast and then I went into the next room and went to uh, Roxy Fibers and it was just like like this was planned <laughs> and I brought these two mohairs from her which she said are from her the colors of her son's hockey team Look at that colour match. Like, isn't that insane? So this is also why I, I bought so much, is because I'd find something and then be like, oh, that's awesome. And then I'd find something else and be like, that is awesome with that other thing. And then I'd find something else and be like, now that is the thing that's going to make the whole thing into a thing. So I'm thinking about doing like a colour block something with this. I've got two of each thing. And there's a huge yardage in this. So this is 100 grams. It's 390 meters. I mean, it is a foreplay. So I am glad that I've got the lace to kind of bulk it out a little bit. So I could use a four mil needle with it. I am loving my four mil needles at the moment. Eh? Like, that's what the Hunstholm, Hunstholm? Please tell me if I'm saying that wrong. Uh, sweater is knit with. It's a four mil. This is a 4.5. Uh, I'm knitting this dress on formal metal Tiago needles, which are fantastic, by the way. Um, they're so good. With the red twist cable. Yeah, I'm really enjoying these needles. Uh, and I'm just really enjoying the 4mm needles. Now, the needles I have, I've got a full set of, I think it's Knit Pro Ginger. Uh, and they are lovely, they're very smooth and kind of short. Then I've got a couple of pairs of Likey needles. I didn't like them at first, haha, <laughs> like Likey, uh, 
but I was using them to knit up that superwash yarn for the Hunstom, Hunstom sweater and I completely changed my mind I really like them I really like the, the likey needles uh, and I really like the Tiago needles too I do not like some well they keep coming off the cable they keep spinning off the cable the um like 3.5 knit pro like rainbow colored needles and i'm using the cable like the knit pro cable with them and they just keep on spinning it is infuriating and i didn't realize how frustrating it was until i switched to other needles that didn't do that and then i tried to go back to a project with my 3.5s and it was just I'm trying to knit to get calm, to de-stress, although knitting can be a kind of stressful activity. <laughs> well, if you're like trying to cast on something that's telling you to count this many stitches and then do this and then count this many stitches, it can be stressful sometimes. Anyway, I'm going to do a colour block something. I want to use these two yarns in the same garment but then my nana was saying that like doing sweater number 15 by my favorite things knitwear I'll just show you a, um, the pattern picture I could like with the full cables would look so cool in that orange and I'm like oh yes yes it would oh that's upside down Twitter number 15 by my favorite things knitwear um now so yes possibly together possibly separate um have enough kind of to make a decision there uh and because oh, I don't think I could get a full sweater especially a cable sweater out of just the four well the the orange yarn that I've got, so, hmm, uh, but what I was going to do is I was intending to use this for sweater number 15, now I've shown this before, this I picked up off Trade Me, it is by Eden Cottage Yarns, so it's a UK based yarn dyer, and it is 100% baby alpaca, DK weight, in the colourway lichen, which I don't think she does anymore, it's gorgeous, I was going to knit my sweater number 15 in this. Actually, no, I still am, but I have to find a mohair to match with it. But I do have the melon mo no. Baby Suri alpaca from Purple Sprouting, which I will go grab now that I could pair with this. But Tiffany Lou from Typical Bliss and Silver Knits both knitted their sweater number 15s in uh, the Dusty Artichoke by oh. Sun is Gone, maybe. And I really like that uh, bluey green colour, that sage green. This is quite a yellow green. And so I wanted to use a mohair with it that had a little bit more blue than yellow in the green just to, yeah, soften it a little bit. Like, I'm not going to get that sage green colour from mixing a mohair with this. No way. But I would like to approach towards that colour by using a blue-tinged mohair with this. Now, I'll grab the purple sprouting melon mohair to show you the combo with this, but... It doesn't, it doesn't meet those requirements, but I think it would look good if I did decide to take that out, so. So really my main issue is that I can't bloody knit fast enough to keep up with all the beautiful yarn that has come into my life, so. I've got enough to look at and keep me blissfully happy for a number of months, so. I'm just going to be knitting away through this gorgeous stash of mine. Uh, and of the stash, these are two Surrey alpaca mohairs that I purchased from Purple Sprouting. Uh, who is a 
Jarndyre, based in the Waikato in New Zealand. And this is Melon, which I was thinking, oh, it's a little bit bluey. That could, that could really make that quite lovely. Maybe, maybe I just, I might, I never swatch, but I can knit a few stitches of this together, maybe starting the pattern and just see what it looks like and if it's the right blend, but I think that could be quite nice. And the awesome thing with this is, noisy traffic, sorry. It's because there's so much meterage in it. And I'm actually quite surprised at, you don't need a lot of yarn for this. I thought it would be for the sweater number 15. Uh, for, I think I will knit the small. I would usually knit the medium, but this is thicker. This is a DK weight yarn, and I think that the suggested yarn in here is actually a fingering weight. So if I knit the small, it should be good. Uh, and the recommended amount for the small is 150 meters of the mohair. Like, I'm pretty sure there's like 400 meters in this. Could I get, will I only need this one skein to do this whole jersey? I'm having the same moment as I had when I realized I could get a whole bloody dress out of just one skein of, well, I haven't done it yet, so I don't actually know, but I'm pretty sure I'll get a whole dress out of one skein of fingering weight hand-dyed merino. So. I think that's, for those of you out there who are maybe hesitating on buying um, hand-dyed fibres because of the price, uh, have a little look and see if you can add it to a project. Um, maybe, you know, getting a really nice hand-dyed uh, Surreal, baby Surreal alpaca or mohair, and then using it with a more budget-friendly, holding it together with a more budget-friendly yarn, you could... Um, it, it could be a way to uh, incorporate more of those hand-dyed fibres into your knitting, but without uh, completely breaking the bank. So, obviously, that is totally dependent on your size as well, so that was inconsiderate of me. So, another option there would be do something like the... Uh, it called the the pattern by Jessie made where she's got the sheer v-neck like it's a top but then the v-neck is sheer and then like just do that v-neck in the luxury fiber and I think that would be more size friendly because you take you'd buy one skein of like the nice yarn and then that's the yarn that's going to be most close to skin and in this kind of sensitive area and then you do that in the luxury fiber but then do the rest in um your more budget-friendly fiber. Uh, and you could even, actually, because you'd probably not use all of this in your v-neck, depending on your size, uh, you could keep knitting, holding this together with the other yarn until, and, and just fading it into the rest of the garment until it ran out, and then you just knit, keep knitting down just with the yarn by itself. Now, obviously, tension could get a bit weird when you stop using this, but I'm just spitballing, it's just ideas. Uh, okay. I'm surrounded by yarn. This makes me very happy. I have 13 balls of this. According to the pattern, I will only need six. So look at that color combo there. Oh, and it matches the garden behind me. Oh my goodness. So this was, yes, Leo and Loft, hand spun yarn. I, there's only 45 grams. And so if I do some type of color work, incorporating it with like the remaining balls I have with, of this, like that's just such a good color match. 
And there's also this kind of, see that color there? The, um, what do you call that? The sagey green. I knit the like net walker warmer thing, the snafug snood, um, in a yarn that is very similar to that. And I'll go grab the scraps and show you like, because I could also incorporate those scraps into the color work. Which is, you know, another way to make the most of these beautiful fibers that I've purchased. Make sure that I'm using them in the most efficient manner possible uh, by making sure I work them into other projects. So I'll just go grab that, ad break. Okay, so as soon as I went into my yarn stash, I've got a bit of a green obsession going on and I just started like pulling out all these different greens to try to color match with this. So this is what I used to knit my Snayfug snood. This is Kama Rosy Snayfug. Uh, and you can see how that like perfectly matches that little sage green that's going on in, in there. So that could Oh, I don't know. I think I'd have to choose one or the other. Like, that looks good. Maybe in, like, very small quantities, like a little dot here and there. Hmm. I also pulled out this. Uh, there were only two balls left of this um, when I purchased this. Uh... So working it into another project would be good, but it's not the right green. This is the green of what I'm wearing. A little bit of leftovers there. I don't know, again, it doesn't quite, it like steals the show a bit too much. This is my leftover of my Chuska alpaca ear from my ranunculus. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I don't know. I think I just like those two together by themselves actually. I don't know what I will knit with this. Remains to be seen. Um, now, at Goodwool, I also purchased, well maybe this is the one that was dyed with eucalyptus leaves. But this is 90% uh, merino, 10% linen. This is a four ply fingering. It looks like, well, if we're gonna be technical, it's single plied. Let's just get a strand. I love the look of single ply. Crop top of a sort out of this. Maybe a t-shirt. Be nice. Uh, so once I'd purchased this from uh, Nana Cindy and Leo and Loft, um, I then went on to find colours that would match this so I could make it into a full garment because there was only just this one unique skein. So Roxy Fibers did it again, you know, matching up with yarns produced by other makers. Look at that, it like perfectly works with that teal in there. Got the scraps. Hmm. It's the alpaca ear from Chuska. Snayfug Snood Kama Rosie. Oh no. Um, well, I got I got these two different colors from Roxy Fibers. These were these were on sale, and I I just love that that triple combo. I think that's so cool. And these are Polwa. And just to remind you, this is wool mohair and silk. Oh, and this is DK Fawn Merino with white alpaca, eighty percent merino, twenty percent alpaca. Oh, and the eucalyptus colorway. So I think that's just so cool. And I'm really enjoying these very 
textured kind of slubby yarns and if you saw my Instagram reel I um, posted about a shipment of ethical yarn that I got a few weeks ago from uh, Yarn Yarn and I got a lot of banana silk like that reel Oh, I'll grab some hanks of that in a minute and show you. And I also got... Like, she was having a massive sale. And so I got... The ethical silk. Oopsie. Where the silkworms are not harmed. Again, this is a single ply. Meaning it's been... There's only one thread. It's not uh, wound together with anything else. Little bit slubby, very nice. I started working this up last night into a uh, old, a custom version of the Spring Sorrel by Woolen Pine, um, which is a t-shirt pattern with these braids coming down the yoke. My plan is to continue the braids all the way down the rest of the body and to also do a keyhole cutout. In the top here uh, and with a collar similar to this one but so I started working it up in the silk uh, and it broke a couple of times and so I realized you know the silk's just too fragile on its own so I've worked it up you know it's only a tiny bit there but with holding it together just with the um, silk mohair that I buy off trade me just the white undyed silk mohair and it is luxuriously soft it's just like silk on silk plus mohair <laughs> so I'm going to do a folded over collar and folded over sleeve edges for it because I want it to have a bit of a oh I actually brought out my iPad so I could show you my sketch but I want it to have how do I even explain it it's very like fantasy um structured thing I don't know how to explain it um I don't know if you'll be able to see this too good but this is the sketch I did last night of what I want it to look like and so I've altered the pattern to have less stitches for the neckline cast on um also because my yarn weight is higher like the, the thickness is higher than the original pattern and I'm just like trying it on and checking as I'm knitting to make sure that it actually is right for my neck circumference and then I'm just gonna modify the pattern as necessary in order to create this all right so that will be my version of the spring sorrel by wool and pine and I know I've got a lot of yarn but I've also got a lot of ideas and a lot of inspiration and like I'm in a position where I can spend my money or on on yarn and it makes me happy uh, I am very conscious about sustainability so I'm also aware that I should not in any way be uh, encouraging overconsumption but what I am doing and what I'm trying to do is consume products that I want to support and uh, are aligning with like my own values around being sustainable. So by using my money as a vote to say, yes, Goodwill, I love what you're doing. I love that you're dying with these natural dyes from plants. I think that's awesome. I'm going to vote yes to you by buying your stuff. Like, it's one of the cool things about capitalism is, like, you can, your consumption uh, can, is your vote. Anyway, that was a bit, little bit too political for an early podcast. Let's just leave that there. That is my opinion only. Not preaching. Hi. I'm very talkative today. And it's, because I'm very excited because I just wrote a lot of yarn. I went with my nana and um, 
she actually didn't buy anything um, because she d knits in a different style to me. Like, she needs to have a pattern and buy yarn for that pattern, whereas I'll find yarn and be like, I will make this with this, and like the yarn will decide a lot of the time. Uh, but she did say, which I thought was really nice, that like she likes my enthusiasm and like me seeing me come up with ideas and stuff. So that was just a really nice experience. Um, like me having so much joy of going to this yarn festival and getting so inspired by the work by these incredible artists and creatives um, that supplied this yarn and knowing that my enthusiasm and excitement brought up my the, my nana's mood and like made her happy so that was really nice uh, oh the other thing I wanted to say in that realm what was it oh yeah so I woke up this morning and you know when you're in that state of like like what's a dream what's real is this real life and you know like yes it is real life and then I was like oh it's morning it's the morning of Fibertron and I kid you not it was the exact emotional feeling of giddy excitement that I would get for like Christmas morning as a kid Am I obsessed with knitting and nice yarn? I think yes. <laughs> and on that, let's get back to uh, some of the things I'm knitting on. So, this is a very interesting design that I came up with. This is what I'm going to call the jelly bug top. All I've got right now is just a collar. Now this is knit with uh, the Isaga mohair held together with a I think a DK weight cotton from Spotlight and another DK weight cotton from Spotlight and what I've done is I've done a provisional cast on around the top of the neck so this is going to come down into like a muscle tank type thing maybe in like a double uh, uh, a a 2 by 2 rib but then what's going to happen is I'm going to come back the provisional cast on, pick up stitches using only the mohair, and I'm just going to knit out. And the cool thing about this design is that I want you to have options of how much you knit. So you could knit just like a nice little lapel of the mohair, like a collar, or you could go the full other extent of that and just keep knitting until it actually becomes like a poncho over top. I don't know. It's called the jelly bug top. And I think I have a sketch that I can show you. Do you get what I mean? Like, like what if a collar was actually a poncho? Is it ridiculous? Yes. Will I wear it in public? I don't know. My, the town that I live in is way too conservative for this type of shit, but... Do I care? Probably a little bit. Not. Will I still wear it? Probably yes. So that will be the jelly bug top. And as you can see, I just cast on like left, right, and center. And I am not a monogamous knitter, but like I did. I finished this because I needed the needles to cast on another project, which I haven't actually cast on yet. Uh, and I have been knitting monogamous, monogamously on this for my partner. So, you win some, you lose some. Oh, it feels like it's going to start raining. Okay. I don't know. Oh my gosh, we're already an hour in. If you're still here and watching, thank you. Thank you for bearing with me. We've got a lot to cover today. Uh, Lots of acquisitions, lots of inspiration, lots of ideas, lots of, like, things happening. Now, I know in my last podcast I said that I wanted to get rid of that um, blue 
alpaca ear from Chaska that I had because I wasn't liking how uh, the fabric was performing in my ranunculus. And I haven't actually sold any of those yarns because like putting things on Trade Me is effort and if I've got free time I will spend it knitting, not doing those things. So the compromise I've made is that I'm going to keep those yarns in stash for gift knits and I've already used some of that dark blue muhu was it muhu? the other Chaska yarn that I was thinking of selling I've already used some of that to knit like a really cute little handbag for one of my friends for her birthday uh, and I just did a, a stockinette rectangle folded it in half put stitches on hold knit on like eight stitches at the edge to start creating the handle just knit stockinette all the way around uh, I either knit the stitches together at the other edge to create the handle or I sewed it on I can't remember and then pick up stitches to do the same on the other side much like the crochet handbags I've shown before but just with knitting uh, and I knit with the two strands held together on nine millimeter needles so it was like a relatively quick project uh, but that's great for a handbag because it's got that plastic content in it that I'm not a huge fan of. But that's good for like a durable pro um, clothing item like a handbag. Now I've been thinking that blue that I have in the alpaca ear, I will either... Oh, I really need... I'll, I'll show... Mm. Do I show you? Do I show you? Do you want to see it? Okay, I'll, I'll just get them so you know what I'm talking about. Okay. So although I wasn't a huge fan of the fabric, um, okay, I say that it was just pilling quite a lot, so if I think if I go over it with a wool shaver, it will actually be fine. Um, and this is the, the alpaca ear that I'm talking about. So, I'll either knit this into a gift, or I'll knit it into a um, Made You Fall dress by uh, Ocean Knits, which is like, this is the Made You Fall top, so like knitting this, but just into a dress with the little cute puff sleeves, using this, plastic in it, probably um, added durability for like sitting because it's a dress but with the way that it's been pilling on my ranunculus I'm like mm, maybe it actually wouldn't like just because it's got plastic in it doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna like perform well it's also like does it have enough twist in it well, there's, there's some twist so like you know like a highly twisted 100% wool can be used as a sock yarn so probably better to use but then if it pills, I can just buy a wool shaver and like shave it. Decisions, decisions, decisions. So yeah, I made the handbag out of this awesome cobalt blue. Poodoo light, yeah, nice. So I've got a few more balls left of that. I'm just gonna hold on to it, put it away somewhere and if it doesn't find a use or a gift knit or a um, knit for myself, um, we'll just see. But you know, I, I change my mind about these things and I change my mind about like what I plan to knit with certain yarns and I'm, yeah, <laughs> changeable all over the place. And that's just how we are. So the what I had wanted to knit with this, which was either the Daphne Top by Friday Knits or the that little blouse that made you fall blouse by Ocean Knits. Uh, I've now decided to knit it in this gorgeous, uh, again, Roxy Fiber, just, you know, hitting all the right notes. This is an Aran, or like a 10 ply, and it is a mix of Brush Baby Alpaca and 70%, and Mulberry Silk 30%, and just, I thought that Merino and Silk was my favorite yarn combination, but it's def, no, it's Alpaca and Silk. But I won't say no to a Merino and Silk, cause, so good. So I'm gonna make a little fluffy blouse with this. And I have realized that yes, I can wear alpaca in like a, a top form. 
you know, I prefer wearing this vest without anything underneath it because then I have like the lovely soft and silky alpaca next to skin and I was very comfortable today just wearing this denim jacket and my jeans um, and if I got a little bit cold I just chuck on my wrist warmers and um, my scarf and yeah and that type of layering is really practical in um, the rather changeable weather that is New Zealand Although I did wear the same outfit um, out to meet some friends and we went on a walk and I did start to overheat and, and sweat a bit. So as long as you're not doing strenuous activity, well, I've found wearing alpaca uh, next to skin in like a top form to be comfortable and practical. So that's why I was like, okay, I can buy this yarn and make the made you fall blouse. I'll, I'll just show you again. Just more consistency so you know exactly what I'm talking about made you fall blouse made in this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful color. oh I might even cast this on because I've been wanting to knit this for a while I bought the full made you fall collection because it was like two buy two get one free and I've been wanting to knit it for a while and I've talked about it a lot but I haven't I tried casting it on once but then I was drinking and trying to knit direct from a cast on and like, that didn't work. I messed it up. Uh, but yeah, this might be my next cast on. Also, oh, it's so soft. Oh my God. Mmm. Mm, it smells delicious. Okay. What else we got? Oh, so yeah, because I decided that I'm not going to knit this with this anymore opens up some options. So this is what I got to match with the purple. And I got this to match with the purple too. Yeah, none of those work with that. Oh, that kind of works. Mm, no, 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 no. Because I don't want anything to distract from the luxury that is this. Oh, I do have some Chuska cotton alpaca blends in a grey could work with this. I've also got a beautiful four ply silk that like is that blue colour but I am reserving that for like another top project so I don't want to dip into that yet. I've also got like a purple cotton. There's so many colours in that. Like I can just pick one and then use that as the um the plain color to work in with this so this is that's really exciting that's why i love piece like little items like this because it uh encourages like fresh creativity and it's also very uh reminiscent of like the noro yarns which i've been like desperate to get my hands on but it's just really hard to find the one that i want which is the carrig Oh, why can't I remember what it's called? Kakagori. Uh, was that the name of the shade? I can't remember. Anyway, very rem reminiscent of like the coolness of the Noro yarns. Um, and so if I can't get my hands on the Noro yarns, then the next best thing is to support a local hand spun. Gorgeous thing. I am so happy to be surrounded by yarn. Have I talked about... Oh, so this was also in the, the bargain bin with, with this from Gumtree Alpacas. Ho oh, ho. Nice. And this is Sunset Pop. Again, four ply, again, woolen spun Polworth. 390 meters and 100 grams so yeah four ply um don't know what it's gonna be but it's cute oh <gasps> does it work it kind of does oh i can't remember what this colorway is sorry but this is um again the baby suri alpaca from purple sprouting 
that works, doesn't it? Yeah, because you've got the pinks and the oranges and the purples. Oh, what if it was like... Huh. Hold on, let me just find the name of this pattern. I think I've got it open on my computer. Oh yeah, the Ruby Tea. The Ruby Tea by We Are Knitters. I can just show you that there. You see that? Am I showing you right? Yeah, like what if I did that um, and like the mesh little things were the this and the rest was this. What is that call for? A worsted 10 ply. Well, this is a 4 ply. Mm. Uh, three skeins of Pima cotton. Oh, okay, so it's not. Well, what I could do is I could take inspiration from that and instead of doing the whole. Uh, Like obviously the, the, the lace work that they're doing there, I could try, I could either try doing a colour work, like a fair isle, like holding the yarn, like floats, um, with it, but then you're still carrying the yarn behind this, so even when you've got like the mesh sections, you're still going to have this yarn behind. Or, I knit it this way so I do two rows of this two rows of this but I knit it across the body so the stripes are going vertically um my nana and I we stopped by a weaving stall yesterday at Fibertron uh and there was some really cool knitted garments on the mannequins and like hanging up on the wall and one of them was a dress that was knit um, yeah, in, in that way, like, it had been knit across, and then the little frills to make, like, pleats for the skirt had just, were just short rows every, and then you'd knit all the way up, down, short row, short row, short row, and it gave, like, the little, uh, extra fabric for the pleated skirt look, and then it was just picked up stitches along the neckline, and then a ribbing knit, and then cast on stitches over the arm. Anyway, that construction of, like, working across could achieve that ruby tea look but with these colours here because if I think if I just held these together I would lose some of the interestingness of that or would I add to it? I don't know I just want to eat it here's two here's two Yarns that are dyed so deliciously that I just want to eat them. Y'all are so talented with your yarn dyeing. I'm obsessed. Obsessed. Now, I think that might be about it. Huh. Have we reached the end of the podcast? I think we might have. I've got one more thing to show you. I went to Auckland and I went and I visited Knit and Stitch. Uh, I do have this like weird. I purchased two skeins of this beautiful fibre. It's a silk merino blend and I'm going to be knitting the chili cardigan uh, with it. And I'm just going to knit the small. The small calls were 250 grams. I've only got 200 grams, so I'm just gonna like make it a little shorter, make the sleeves a little shorter, you know. Uh, and I'll show you the. Was it in this magazine? Um, my nana has kindly let me let me her lane magazines and her patterns. Uh, oh, was it in here? I think it was in. Was it in here? I thought it was. Sorry, I really, I really want to show you this um, cardigan. Um. Oh, here we go. So it's in this book. This cardigan here, chili cardigan. 
So it's very much a, I think, a spring autumn, possibly summer cardigan, you know, quite light. Uh, they hold it together with a mohair and it's knit on 3.5, I won't show you the pen, 3.5 millimeter needles. Um, very nice. I tried casting this on and just, <laughs> it's funny with some patterns, like I have to translate it to make it work in my head. So this pattern will go like knit one, pull one, repeat four times. And I'm like, work and rib for eight stitches. Like that's what makes sense for me. So I struggled with the cast on because it was like, do this, repeat it four times, then change and do this and repeat it six times. And I'm like crossing off all the repeats on my little notepad and I've done like, I've filled a whole page on my notepad and I haven't even finished casting on yet. So, but I think once I get past that hurdle, that will hopefully start knitting up a lot faster. And while I was at Knit and Stitch, I also um, purchased some more of the fibre that I'm going to use to make that oversized summer top that I've talked about in previous podcasts using a like linen silk blend, alpaca blend. Mer linen? No. It's like linen silk merino alpaca. Like it's a lot of things. Very lovely textile. Uh, but I also got, there was a chuska yarn on sale it was like a really chunky yarn and I knit I got one skein in white and in one weekend I knit this like crazy looking crop top thing with like 300 ties at the back and my partner saw it and he was like oh you remind me of the Flintstones I was like But you know what, you know, a bit of, a bit of, um, a bit of the ancient vibes. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, I'll, I'll get it and show you. Um, hopefully I'll be bothered to put it on and take a photo or a clip. Sorry I'm not trying anything on in this video. Um, it's just cold and, uh, Hopefully I'll take pictures and put them in, but let me go grab that. Okay, so this is the Indesita Grande, 100% baby alpaca. And this was on sale when I got it. Oh, I didn't show you the banana silk yarns. Oh. I won't buy any more yarn after this, I promise. But this, is it knit up? Hold on. Like, you can see... I've created a monster. Okay, so this is, this goes around the neck and it comes around over the boobs and it's rolling up a little bit, but it will go flat and then it all just ties up in this like crazy mess of things at the back. <laughs> it was very much a freehand whateverness. It's so soft, oh my gosh, look at that little halo. Oh. But I haven't worn it because I don't want to look like a Flintstone. But it's cute. But it's only going to be warm on here. So I need to make a little shruggy to go with it. Or just a cardigan. I've got a cardigan planned that will go with it. 
things to do, things to... I need like little minions to knit for me. But then, no, I wanna knit it, no. I've just pulled this out. This is um, one of the two shades of Chuska that I have in the cotton alpaca. I've got a slightly more like lighter gray, like a stone gray. So, I mean, that works. I think maybe the lighter color, cause that, that's a bit dull. The lighter color might bring out more interestingness in this. I don't know. Hmm. I'll get the lighter color and see what that looks like. Oh, and I'll get the banana silk. Okay. So here's the lighter color. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Just for comparison. But all of them might be a bit much. Oh, but if it was in like a cool like block color work. I like the block colors, like the big diamonds, like I talked about with that other vest, or like big checks, or even like a hound's tooth kind of thing. And it's quite cool when it's like solid colors and then like one variegated. I think that's nice. Or I just knit like a little vest, maybe with the, the armholes and the neckline is in the light gray. Or I do this thing with this thing. Lots of options. Uh, and these are the, the banana silks that I got on sale from Yan Yan. So I was thinking of doing like a panel to dress with this. So knitting panels in this and then connecting it all together with like a finer, lighter yarn, like a mohair or something. And then having those portions of uh, See through kind of like what I was talking about with the ruby tea, which does the lace work, but instead of doing that, um, like what Jessie Mae did with that v neck share thing, and then this is just going to be a basic, probably raglan oversized jersey that um, my partner and I will share. I think that will look really, really cool. Knit it up with this. And, oh my gosh, I think that is everything. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being such a lovely community. I'm, I'm so thankful for, uh, oh, wait. I'm so thankful for the world of knitting and, um, you guys are awesome and your lovely comments are very uh encouraging and um heartwarming so thank you so much for your support has this been in frame the whole time mm. bad form taylor bad form look does that work or is that or is the blue overtaking this oh that's the thing i want this to be the thing that shines but whenever i put another color next to it the other color kind of takes the cake Taylor, you're supposed to be ending the podcast. Yeah, maybe that. Oh, I don't know. Stay tuned to find out what Taylor does with all of the beautiful New Zealand yarns. Thank you to um, Paula for organizing Fibertron. I don't know how you pull it off, lady. You're, and this is also the woman who runs uh, Purple Sprouting. It was a fantastic event. Loved the how organized it was. Very nice logo and website for the for the event. Uh, very, I liked the advertisement for it um, on Instagram, and how there were posts about all of the the uh, retailers leading up to the event. You know, describing what they they were selling and. Yeah, it was such a good event. Um, if you weren't able to attend this year and you're based in New Zealand, I highly recommend going when, if you're able to next year. If it's on next year. Uh, and thank you to all of the very talented yarn dyers who created all of this incredible 
yarn that I'm gonna have so much fun knitting. My problem now is figuring out what do I cast on first? We're just ignoring the fact that I shouldn't cast on and I should finish everything else I've got on the needles first. We're just ignoring that. Okay, Taylor, finish the podcast. Bye.